What's up everyone, LV Fig and Garden Channel. Today we're gonna to be trying Shangri-La Mulberry and some other ones. We're back at Tim Brown's house and we got some treats here. Um, we're gonna see which one's better, the world's best mulberry or Shangri-La. Just like Tim says, I like them red to black. I like that tart flavor. So let's see what we got going on here. Mm, that one's really good. Let's find some more. All right, here's the tree. It's a good sized tree. It's got some beautiful leaves here. Let's see what else we got. You can see there, they're pure white when they're not ripe. Which seems different, but I got some black ones in here. Look at those beauties. That one's about as ripe as you can get right there. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, it's really sweet. Let's grab one more here. This one would be like how I like it. It's red on the inside and turning black on the outside. I got mulberry juice on the outside of my phone. I wish you guys could see it. It looks like a crime scene. Mmm, that's good. I don't know. Definitely a different taste. Let's get one. I'm trying to find one that's really black. This one is really black. Okay. Let's go try the other ones. All right, we're back here with the world's best mulberry. And, uh... Tim said he's been eating off this for three to four weeks now. It's pretty insane. As you can see, the tree is over six feet tall, planted from a cutting last year, bush-like, aggressive. There's still tons of fruit on it, but it's dwindling down. Um, the question is, will it produce again in the fall or even in the summer? The original owner of this tree said it produces all year long for him, but that's in a different climate zone. So let's grab a fruit here and take a taste. All right, here. Here's one, like the other one. We're doing the comparison. This is red turning black. Okay, that one's a little tangy. Not that sweet. I saw a really black one. Where did it go? Here it is. Looks like something was nibbling on the bottom. Okay. So far, right now, the Shangri-La is winning, but I don't have complete, this one is not ripe at all. Hmm, super tangy. Those are fun, it's like a lemon. Once again, I don't have a complete black one like the Shangri-La, so it's not a true comparison today, but based on last time, mm, that one was good. Today, uh, the taste winner would be Shangri-La, 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 however you say it. That's gonna be the winner for today. But how this thing was producing last week and the weeks prior, um, you just need both. That's, that's my conclusion. Have a world's best, have a Shangri-La. And uh, I'll do more tasting on mulberries in the next year or two and come to a conclusion which one's the best. Stay tuned for more videos and uh, thanks for watching. We're standing here underneath the black Persian mulberry. This thing is a beautiful specimen. I'm gonna step back here. It's pushing 13, 14 feet. It's got a nice tree trunk here. This is what you're gonna do like Tim did if you want a canopy tree. You're gonna leave it high. You're not gonna cut it low. You see the trunk here starts at about four feet or higher. You can get under this, but it's loaded. I don't know if you guys can see the little green fruit here. 
they're in there. They're little green. You see them? Right there. Little tiny, all in there. So this guy produces really late. I got to try one that wasn't even ripe last year. And it reminded me of a gummy bear. So this tree is the, the mulberry that I need to try because... Based on last year, this one might be my favorite tasting mulberry, but it's a late producer. You can see it's a great giant shade tree, so stay tuned for the black Persian mulberry, and we'll see which one's the true king.